Welcome back, students. Before we start our afternoon story, I want to share with you some responses I received in the mail. Um, last week, I asked the question about whether humans had life cycles and how they might be different or the same as butterfly life cycles. And a student actually wrote to me, and I got a response in the mail, that we do indeed have a life cycle, but it's different because we don't make a shell around ourselves and come out completely different. And also, our skin doesn't break. It stretches as it grows. So thank you so much to the student who wrote to me about that. Also, I had another student last week. They sent me a really cool, a nice big thank you picture. It looks like there's a thank you here with a uh, maybe a pigeon there in the bottom area of the, of the picture. And also, they did a nice drawing of some different presidents of Washington, Lincoln, and Obama. So thank you so much for emailing, for sending stuff to me. It's great to hear from you guys. So I thought this afternoon, because we've been talking about nursery rhymes this morning, and we're going to continue to learn more and more nursery rhymes, um, it'd be fun to stick with some traditional stories and traditional rhymes, and that makes it perfect to revisit Tommy de Paola. And here's a bunch of books I have by Tommy de Paola. If you'll remember, he's most famous for Straganona, the story of Straganona and Big Anthony and her magic pasta pot. Um, but he's written lots of different books. Uh, I've been showing you his illustrations for the nursery rhymes that we've been learning. Um, he's written some actual kind of stories from his life um, about when he was little. And he's even written uh, some nonfiction books. This is a book called The Popcorn Book that we read about before when we were learning about uh, nonfiction books. Uh, for today, I'm going to read to you this really funny book of his. It's called The Comic Adventures of Old Mother Hubbard and Her Dog, illustrated by Tommy DePaolo. So this is from the nursery rhyme, Old Mother Hubbard. And there's the old woman and there's her dog. They look like they're friends. And on the back, no blurb, just a goose. It looks like a goose, I think, not a regular duck. Here we go. The comic, now, when I look at the title page, this book is so full of cool illustrations. I'm gonna have to kind of scoot up and back and forth so you get a chance to see them all. And I actually read this in class at uh, one point a long time ago, but I think not everybody's had a chance to hear it. So, the comic adventures, comic, that means it's gonna be funny of Old Mother Hubbard and her dog. And when I look at the title page, I see all kinds of characters. It's like they're in a theater, right? Like an old-fashioned theater. And in the balcony, watching the performance, are some different characters from nursery rhymes. I see up here in the corner, who do you think that is? Humpty Dumpty and, oh, this is actually Mother Goose. In fact, if I look over here, it's the same picture as the mother goose here. And maybe that is Mary with her little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Hmm. Okay, let's get going. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. And so the poor dog had none. Oh! Wait a minute, this is supposed to rhyme, so hold on. When she got there, the cupboard was bare. Okay, bare means the cupboard was empty. I see them looking in the cupboard. But it said, to fetch your poor dog a bone, bone and none, don't really rhyme. But we talked about that, how sometimes in nursery rhymes and in poetry, they use words that almost rhyme, but not quite. Let's just read the first part over again. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so the poor dog had none. And you can enjoy saying the rhymes with me if you know them. And there I see two children in the borders reading a book. And there's those other characters. Oh, and there's somebody new. Oh, the king and queen of hearts. Okay, I see a bunch of bread. Let's see. She went to the baker's to buy him some bread, but when she came back, the poor dog was dead. I think he's just playing dead. So there she is at the baker's. Oh, and I see two little children in this detail, two little children 
they're looking, a boy and girl looking up a hill at a well. Oh, look at that. They're looking up the hill at the well. And then they went up, but they also fell down. Hmm, who would that be? And there, look, somebody has their head covered with brown paper and vinegar. Vinegar and brown paper. Did you see that? That's Jack and Jill there. Okay, and the old Mother Hubbard, she was just at the baker's. Okay, so she's at the baker's to buy bread. Oh, wow, what's on this page? She went to the undertaker's to buy him a coffin. But when she came back, the poor dog was laughing. Ooh, an undertaker. That's where bodies go <laughs> to be taken care of after they're dead. But he's laughing. Hmm. And over here, I see a girl calling out. And there's a, a boy in the field. Look, he's supposed to be looking. There's some sheep. Uh-oh, he's under the haystack, fast asleep. Sheep sleep. Hmm, I think that's another character from a nursery rhyme. She took a clean dish to get him some tripe, but when she came back, he was smoking a pipe. On the sides, I see a little girl with some lamb. Hmm, which character would that be? She went to the fishmongers to buy him some fish, but when she came back, he was licking the dish. Okay. You know, I gotta stop and think. I'm also noticing that she's going all these different places for stuff and for food, and there's a name for the job of every place she goes. There was an undertaker, a fishmonger, a baker. Hmm, that's interesting. Lots of different places she's visiting, different jobs. And there's another little girl with a watering can. And there's, oh, could that be Mary, Mary, quite contrary? How does your garden grow? And she's going to water it with silver bells and cockle shells. There's silver bells, cockle shells, and pretty maids all in a row. She went to the tavern for white wine and red, but when she came back, the dog stood on his head. And there I see a little boy sitting in the corner. Oh, with a pie. And he put in his thumb and pulled out a plum. Oh, and there's someone different. This guy pulled out his plum, put in his thumb and pulled out a plum. But then here's another little boy who's getting ready to jump over a candlestick. I wonder who that is. She went to the fruiterers to buy him some fruit. But when she came back, he was playing the flute. And there I see a little girl with a bowl, maybe of curds and whey. Oh, and there's a little spider. And she ran away. She went to the tailors to buy him a coat. But when she came back, he was riding a goat. And if I look in the corner, Hmm, there it's winter, and there's a little robin in the winter, and there's a robin gone in the barn. I wonder what robin character that could be from what nursery rhyme. She went to the hatters to buy him a hat, but when she came back, he was feeding the cat. Oh my gosh, he's got the cat. There she is at the hatters. A hatters, and there the dog is feeding the cat. He's wearing baby clothes. And if we look at the detail, let's see who's over here. I see a girl with a cat. I see a queen with a cat. And I see a cat chasing a mouse. Right there, cat chasing the mouse. And there's the queen in the 
And the cat, hmm, pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? Maybe the pussycat went to London to visit the queen. She went to the barbers to buy him a wig, but when she came back, he was dancing a jig. And here I see hmm, a boy buying something, maybe a pie or something from a baker. And he's walking along and he has no money in his pockets. And then he goes fishing in a pail. Hmm, that's a character I don't even know. Maybe you'll figure out who that nursery rhyme character is. She went to the cobbler's to buy him some shoes, but when she came back, he was reading the news. Oh, look at him with his spectacles on, and he's reading the newspaper. And in the corner, and the side in the border, I see a king. And someone's bringing him a pipe and a bowl of something. Oh, maybe old King Cole was a merry old soul. A merry old soul was he. She went to the seamstress to buy him some linen. But when she came back, the dog was a spinning. Oh my goodness, the dog is at a spinning wheel. We talked about spinning wheels that turn uh, wool into thread that you can then use. And here I think I see a Baba Black Sheep. Have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Three bags full, one for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy who lives down the lane. She went to the hosiers to buy him some hose. Hose are like socks and stockings. But when she came back, he was dressed in his clothes. Oh, he got all dressed up. There she is buying hose or stockings for him, but he was all dressed up. And look at this one. Everybody knows this one. I see a cat with a fiddle. Hey, diddle, diddle. Cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. The dame made a curtsy. The dog made a bow. The dame said, your servant. The dog said, bow wow. Oh, it looks like they're kind of bowing to each other to be respectful and like they're going to start dancing. And in the little pictures, the side pictures, I see a little person in their sleeping clothes, in their night clothes. Maybe that's Wee Willie Winkie runs through the town, upstairs, downstairs, in his nightgown. Tapping at the window, peering through the locks. Oh, he's peeking through a lock. Are you supposed to look inside people's windows, inside their locks? Is everybody in their bed? It's past 10 o'clock. And that's the end. Wow. Well, that book has so many details in the illustrations. I hope you were able to see and enjoy them a bit. You know, I was trying to hold them up to the camera so you could see. Um, and like I said, the thing I also really like about this is how old Mother Hubbard is going to visit all the different places in town to get stuff for the dog. And we're learning about all the different jobs that they used to have. There used to be uh, people called hatters who made hats. Tailors made clothes. Fruiterers sold fruit. Taverns, that's where there was like an inn where people went to eat and drink. Fishmongers sold fish. Nowadays, there are also cheesemongers. Cheesemongers sell cheese. And you know what's interesting? Nowadays, more we go to one place to buy stuff. We go to the grocery store where we can buy all different kinds of food. And we go to a, a bigger store, a department store, Target or something, maybe to buy clothes and stuff like that. But in the old days, um, most of those things were sold by different individual people. And it's interesting, in other parts of the world, that's still the case. Where I used to live overseas, uh, you would go to the market and there was the vegetable lady and the fruit lady and the fishmonger and the butcher um, or the milkman. So um, in some places around the world, people still have these individual jobs. It's different than where we are now, but it's also more about what it was like too in the old days here.
So anyway, that's a fun nursery rhyme, Old Mother Hubbard. And I'll be interested to see if some of you remembered or even could identify some of the other nursery rhymes that were in the tiny little illustrations on the borders because I couldn't figure them all out. So maybe some of you can write in to me by email or send me a little note um, to explaining if you recognize some nursery rhyme that I didn't, some character that I couldn't remember. Anyway, I hope you guys have a nice afternoon. Now, don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, um, do some reading and some writing, help your family around the house. I miss you guys. I love you. Elbow bump.